First item on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to have a motion to adopt the Romano agenda. Romano adopts the agenda. Van Sickle support. Romano adopts the agenda, supported by uh, Van, Van Sickle. Sickle. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes dated March 16th, 2022. I'd like to have a motion to approve them. So move, Wallace. Moved by Wallace, supported by, by Zinner. Any comments, questions on the minutes? Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is public participation. This is the first opportunity for public participation. It's for those who wish to speak for a maximum of three minutes on an item which is on today's agenda. Second opportunity for public participation for those who wish to speak on any issue will be later in the meeting. Would anyone like to speak? When once going twice so public participation is closed this time i'd like to have a presentation uh item number six on the agenda the clinton river watershed shed council update with susan kelsey and eric diesling please go ahead well thank you commissioners for having us here today to talk with you a little bit about the clinton river watershed council uh, we have a lot of information here for you to introduce you to our organization so i'm going to be running through this really quick um, i provided you with our latest newsletter a pamphlet that kind of details our organization as well as my business card so i want to extend an invite to any of you who have questions after this presentation to reach out to me uh, my name is Eric. I am the Chief Watershed Ecologist for the Clinton River Watershed Council, and with me today is Susan Kelsey, who is our Interim Executive Director. So, uh, we are the Clinton River Watershed Council. Uh, our mission is to protect, enhance, and celebrate the Clinton River, its watershed, and Lake St. Clair, which I will direct you to this slide to get an idea of what our service area looks like. Uh, the Clinton River drains approximately 760 square miles of land that covers about 95% of Macomb County, 50% of Oakland County, and small little corners of both Lapeer and St. Clair counties. Uh, we serve over 63 communities within the Clinton River watershed and then nine additional communities in the Macomb County portion of Anchor Bay and the Lake St. Clair direct drainage. We have over 1.5 million people within our boundary. Uh, that makes us the most densely populated watershed in the state of Michigan. So with that amount of development, as you all are very much aware, we do deal with some water quality issues and some habitat degradation issues, but we've come a long ways uh, over the past few years. So at one point back in the 1960s, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources did a fish survey from the mouth of the river on Lake St. Clair up to the city of Pontiac and did not find a single living fish in the entire system. Uh, now, today, we have a thriving urban steelhead fishery. We have a trophy brown trout fishery in Paint Creek, um, improving water Water quality all around. The picture that you see here, the macroinvertebrates are the nymphs, the bugs that you see there are stoneflies collected from the Clinton River. Uh, these are an indicator of excellent water quality and we've seen an uptick of them in recent decades. So going into a little bit of what the Watershed Council does, I'm gonna highlight our, some of our main programs throughout this presentation. So the first one up is our Stream Leaders Program. This is our middle school and high school education program. Uh, we work with over 19 schools now, and on average every year, we get about 3,500 kids out in the watershed, in the water doing place-based education. What that means is that everything is hands-on. So we get the students out, they're doing water quality sampling, they're doing chemistry, they're doing physical habitat sampling. They're looking at the macroinvertebrates, the fish in all of our waterways. This is one of our largest and longest running programs um, with support of several uh, organizations, the counties. Um, GM is a big supporter of this program as well. 
Another thing that we do is we like to focus a lot on stormwater because stormwater uh, doesn't always get the focus that some of our other issues deal with. Um, so for stormwater, we do facilitate the public education plans, otherwise known as the PEPs, for most of our municipalities within the watershed. Uh, we take care of all their presentations, workshops, reporting to the state, to Eagle. Um, we also provide all of our newsletters, our brochures, our best management practice flyers are all available on our website as well as in print form at all of our municipalities. That's part of their um, stormwater fee-for-service contract that they pay to us. Another piece of that uh, puzzle, if you will, is our Adopt-A-Stream program. This is our volunteer science initiative. It's our largest volunteer program. We have about 300 volunteers who have been trained. We average about 200 volunteers participating every year in collecting water quality and habitat data from throughout the watershed. Uh, at over 50 sites we monitor in May and October. And this helps us to create a baseline water quality analysis. This program has been active for over 20 years. Um, so we can look back over the last 20 years and get an idea of what's happening to our water quality and our habitat quality throughout the system. Weekly Clean is one piece of our Keeping It Clean program. So the Weekly Clean program, every Wednesday we have volunteers out throughout the watershed uh, in Macomb and Oakland counties, helping us to clean up our waterways, picking up trash, removing debris from the system. Um, we gather thousands of pounds of trash every single year, uh, and it's all thanks to our volunteers and our corporate sponsors and our members to help us facilitate these trash cleanups. Uh, we also have Clinton Cleanup the third Saturday in September every single year, where it's one big day with multiple cleanups across the entire watershed, all happening at once. And we like to highlight that data as a real big volunteer win each and every year. And then finally, I, <clears throat> excuse me, our trash run program, which is relatively new. Uh, we work with our local liveries here in the watershed and we actually get volunteers out in kayaks to kayak down the river and pick up trash as they go. Um, so that helps us to pick up trash as well as educate on the river itself because a lot of times we're passing through different restoration projects as we're going down the system. I won't spend too much time on this because I'm sure you guys are all very much uh, familiar with the Clinton River Spillway and all the investment that's been made over there. Uh, really taking a historic ditch and turning it into an active and productive ecosystem, adding the five off-channel habitats and increasing the habitat heterogeneity of the system. Another one I wanted to highlight here in Macomb is the Clinton River Corridor Restoration Project. This was a large project. Uh, it effectively addressed nine miles of the Clinton River Main Branch through the city of Utica and the city of Sterling Heights. Um, this was one of the many area of concern projects that were completed in Macomb County um, through EPA funding and through local and state funding as well. Just to kind of iterate that these projects do cross that um, jurisdictional border, this is a highlight of one of the projects that we did in Oakland County on Oakland University's campus to address Galloway Creek. Uh, the picture that you can see there on the left is an exposed consumer's oil pipeline. Um, that was effectively, the channel was moved off of that pipeline, moved over, and those banks were stabilized to prevent erosion and any future spills. This map that you see here um, <clears throat> shows all of the GRI funded restoration projects that have taken place throughout the Clinton River watershed. Uh, we've had over $43 million worth of investment brought in through the Area of Concern program. And these projects are continuing to this day. This example that you see here is another one from Oakland County, right on the border of Shelby Township. Uh, this is a project that we just implemented last, within the past two years, restoring 500 feet of stream bank um, for habitat and angler access. Because of our steelhead fishery, we have a big opportunity to boost our local fishing economy throughout the watershed. And that was one of the goals of this project. Finally, the uh, last but certainly not least program that I wanted to highlight here today was Water Towns. This is our placemaking initiative that focuses on recreation, green infrastructure. Um, 
Through this program, we help our communities to facilitate green infrastructure installations and renderings, giving them ideas and connections to the engineering community on how they can implement green infrastructure, things like rain gardens, bioswales, impervious pavers, things like that. Um, and finally, the recreation piece, which is another one that should hit very close to home, as right in MacArthur Park, we were able to install, um, in partnership with the city, a universally accessible kayak launch. This is one of our larger initiatives is to make sure that anything we do recreationally meets that universally accessible standard. We want to make sure that all of our residents in the watershed have the same access to these great resources that we have here. Um, this is a rendering that was originally done. We were doing the design of MacArthur Park. Um, there's still some things that we're working on out there and we'll continue to work on into the future as we continue to expand our recreational access along the river. Short and sweet, um, just thank you guys again. It was my pleasure to kind of present to you what we've been doing and some of the things that we're going into here in the future. Contact information for the Watershed Council is on this slide. My personal contact information is on the business cards that you should all have. Um, we're here for you guys for anything that you need, uh, answer questions, future projects, whatever the case may be, so thank you. It's amazing to see all the projects there. But you had mentioned funding through SEMCOG, local, state, <coughs> federal funding sources. Mm -hmm. One project was a $43 million investment. How do you get funding? So the $43 million investment, that's a collective investment. So that's multiple different grants all kind of pooled together. Um, we, so we identify projects in a variety of ways. A lot of times it's through partnerships. So that whether that be working directly with the counties. So here in Macomb, we work very closely with economic development as well as public works department. Um, and we also can identify projects on our own. So I spend a lot of time out gathering data in the watershed that relates to our water quality and habitat. So if I can identify a spot that we may want to address, we then will pursue grants on our own or in partnership with that entity. So that $43 million, that includes a $20 million direct investment through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative through the EPA. Uh, the additional $23 million came from local match to that 20 as well as state grants through the dnr eagle um, the herb family foundation is another large funder of ours and a lot of their money goes to green stormwater infrastructure practices fantastic it looks like you're doing a lot to try and get the funding so yes. congratulations again to you and your team thank you that's all i have chair thank you very much commissioner romano thank you chair hi eric hello Eric, you ever kayak through Dodge Park? I have, yes. Well, so have I. But I'm looking at this picture, which was on page four, this gentleman with that big steel head and the sunglasses. Yeah. That's my nephew. Yeah. Really? That's my nephew, Don, yeah. Now, he fishes, <laughs> yes. That's amazing. And he fishes Yates constantly sure. and catches, the, he's a catch and release guy. We'll not keep him, but he's catch and release. But he, wasn't, he doesn't want to fish the Clinton River in Dodge Park. And I say, Don, what, what's the problem? He said, Uncle Joe, I lose more lures in Dodge Park than any place else because they won't clean the river up there. And I said, what do you mean they don't clean it? He said, well, oh. no, incidentally, for what it's worth, believe it or not, I walk the trails every single morning. Maybe, maybe twice a month I'll miss. Sure. I start at the bridge, walk north, sometimes I walk south. Sure. And that river is so clogged with debris that it, it's... And I, I noticed that you have your, your, your cleanup day, but it's, mm -hmm. it's generated for one day. Come on, we could do more better than that. Uh, I think you could anyway with your volunteers. Some can't make it that specific day. How about two or three or four different days that you could pick during the summer that you, the volunteers could come out? Some of that stuff has to, and not only will it enliven the river itself for more fishing, because at one time, as you and I both know, the Clinton River there was the hallmark of the fisheries. I mean, they've had they had fisheries hooked up right there at the at the river itself. Sure. And it's coming back. I see them pulling them out of there. But again, I still hear the fishermen complaining because it's so clogged up. And I'm just wondering if maybe I, I don't know. It, it, you know, the bottom line is money. It's always money. Right. How do we get the equipment out there? How do we move this stuff? And I see some of the stuff that's pulled. I can point you to a refrigerator that's still in there. It's been in there probably since I started walking. A lot of debris in there. My point is. If we could have more cleanup days, or if we can find more sources of funding, mm -hmm. because we do have some sources, and get some people out there to help clean up the river, I think it would not only help 
the flow of the river, it would clean it up for the junk that's in there that would probably, uh, again, some of that iron and stuff that's in there, I'm sure it's going to hurt the habitat that's in there. Just a thought I wanted to bring up to you, and I said, if you, if you kayak it, you can see it. People sometimes have to literally get out of the kayak and push it around the debris in order to continue on. That's sure. not right. Anyway, if you can take a look at that, that would be great. Absolutely, yeah. So I just want to clarify, so we have over 50 cleanups throughout the year. Uh, we are cleaning up once a week, every week, and then we also have specialty cleanups. So that cleanup that you saw in September, that's one single day where we do multiple across the whole watershed. But we do clean up every single week at different locations, uh, including Dodge Park is one of our target areas because of the restoration project that went through there. Now, the large woody debris issue, we are very much aware of that issue. Uh, we we work with our local liveries to try to help us keep that area open. It's going to be a constant battle. Um, a lot of that has to do with the emerald ash borer that came through years ago, and now we're, all those trees are starting to come down, and unfortunately, they enter into the system. Will Sterling Heights come up with any money for you, or have they come up for any money with you to help clean their portion? Yeah, Sterling Heights has been a great partner of ours. They've they've always been a member. They helped us with the restoration project, and they also pay us their membership fees every single year. It's It's not only a funding issue. It's also a staffing issue. You know, we, we have six full-time staff that runs all of our programs across the entire watershed. So we do the best we can to divvy up our um, areas of concern across all of our communities to make sure everyone's getting their piece. Um, but this is definitely something that I will look into and I will coordinate with our program coordinator and make sure that she gets some weekly I'm going to text you there. my phone number when you have clean sure. up in Sterling Heights in there. I'll be more than happy to join you with awesome. some volunteers. Absolutely. Very Thank good. you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Eric. That's all I have, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Brown. Thank you. Uh, who knew, Commissioner Romano, you're such a passionate advocate for that. I didn't know that. It was quite interesting. <laughs> I'm going to get you a pair of waders. And, and I have fished it, but I never caught anything, but I have fished it. Well, we'll get those lures out of the bank that you lost. I know you're, <laughs> I know you're tight. And we'll, we'll get. for the money, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, the Clinton River is an AO, still an AOC, correct? Correct. And then, you know, one time the Clinton River was on fire. <laughs> It, it was really one of the pollute. It gave River Rouge a run for its money. <laughs> but we've surpassed River Rouge now, I think. Though yes. they've done good work down there, too. Um, $43 million is a remarkable tribute to um, the congressional delegation, quite frankly. They're the ones that, that money came from Washington and uh, back in the day, Congressman Bonnier, um, then Congressman Levin, Congressman Miller, Congressman Mitchell, all of them threw right on through the the last 20 years, 30 years I've been on the board, have been really advocating for that, to bring those federal dollars through. And as a matter of fact, I was a young commissioner then and went to the River, Clinton River, the Watershed Council, and said, why don't we do some more with that? Because they were doing a cleanup of the Clinton River. Mm -hmm. And they had all these trucks and chains pulling things out of the river. I thought that was pretty cool. They did, that was once a year type of thing, and it, they took a lot of debris out. And sure. so why doesn't the county get involved? And they brought them over here. and. The county became a member back in the early 90s, and uh, and it was it all started because we were watching those. Uh, they were looking for money mm -hmm. to help pull logs out of the river, and uh, look how far we've come. And in fact, the Clinton River watershed. How many how many dollars are you guys under management now? Are you guys working with grant dollars to get work done in the river? Um, Sue, do you have a? Um, Yeah, I was going to say it's right around 450000 that we have locked in right now, um, but we're always actively seeking those projects. We've got some applications in that are pending. Your credibility has grown so much because at the time it was just a loose association of people that were involved with the river, river and, and over time the county gave the River Shed Council some money to invest to try to help with identifying um, this illicit discharges and so forth like that. And, finding pipes coming into the river and there was some reluctance to give it to a non-profit agency give our county tax dollars a board that was run by civilians pretty much and um look where you've come today it, yeah. and it, so the credibility is there you go the, i've made suggestions that some of us could be part of the river shed council and attend some of the meetings you'll see a lot of leaders from the whole region there up and down the river sending engineers and things going on to try to improve that quality because that's a real asset which makes macomb county another reason to be in part of macomb county it's a destination the um what's next how how, how many more prices do we have to get done before the aoc is delisted 
We're no longer an area concerned by the EPA. Sure, yeah. So we, we've already uh, delisted one of our beneficial use impairments. Aesthetics is gone. Um, that leaves us with seven, which sounds like a huge list. However, all of the habitat projects are completed. So we're in the process of drawing up those BUI removals for review. Um, so we should have a few more coming off within probably the next three years. Um, and then I actually, I was just sitting on a meeting yesterday uh, with a bunch of the state and federal government agencies talking about the eutrophication BUI. So we're, we're actively working on bringing that list down. It'll be a few years yet, but the good part about it being a few years yet is we can get more work done. So we've got a laundry list of projects that we can dip into and use um, these dollars as they're coming through the pipeline, including some from the infrastructure bill that was just passed. Um, our AOC is gonna be one of the ones that EPA targets with some of that funding to get some of the larger scale projects done, including sediment work right here in Mount Clemens. A few years ago, it was in Congressman Mitchell's office, they were targeting that, the, our river, to, to, mm -hmm. to get off the list sooner rather than later. Yes. Sounds like it slowed down a little bit. They are definitely targeting it. Um, we just want to make sure that when EPA delists us, that we have the data to back that up. We don't want to have EPA say, hey, you're delisted, but we're still dealing with all these issues. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that this money is doing what EPA has intended it to do and what we want it to do for our river and for our region. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your good work and the whole team over deserves accolades. Thank you. You just had your annual meeting, didn't you? And it's coming up. It's actually April 28th. It's in Oakland County this year, right? Yes. Because yeah. they moved those annual meetings from Macomb to Oakland County, so mm -hmm. back and forth. So yep. if any commission wants to go, it would be a good thing to go get introduced to the whole program. And a lot of partners there that you probably would be surprised that are there. So, so Absolutely. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Eric and uh, Susan, I appreciate it. As a youth, I spent most of my time playing down on the river where Commissioner Romano now takes a walk before the <laughs> asphalt paths were there. I helped build all the little dirt paths with my bike. <laughs> so I uh, went there last summer, and it looks gorgeous compared to 45 years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So great job. Appreciate you coming in. We do have a uh, motion support to receive and file. Please vote. Chair. And Commissioner Sabatini. Speaking. Just really quick, Eric, um, just want to let you know that this board um, doubled its investment in the drain cleanout uh, with our this budget cycle uh, with the Public Works Commissioner. Fantastic. Um, so obviously that water goes right into the Clinton River. Yep. Um, so with that 50-50 match program, um, we're looking for communities to partner with us. So we put more money in the pot. Um, obviously that's a direct result of what you're doing. So. Just want to make you aware of that as well. Thank you, and we will support as much as we can. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Eric and Susan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Motion passes 12 to zero. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is a presentation from Guidehouse uh, regarding the ERP funding with David Cernick. If I can have a motion to receive and file. So moved by Wallace, supported by Hall. Thank you very much. David, welcome. All right, great. Um, hello, my name is David Cernick. Uh, I work with Guidehouse. Um, and I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, ARPA funding and what you can do with it. I've got a lot of slides. I'm going to try to run through this as quickly as possible, but hopefully this deck is something you can take back with you as a re reference and a resource later. And then we'll do Q&A after, of course, um, so I can hope, hopefully help fill any gaps for you. Um, so before I get going, um, of course, my name is David Cernick, and I've been working um, with Guidehouse for the last couple years. I'm specifically working on COVID projects across the state of Michigan. Um, our company does work on COVID projects across the country. Um, and so we all kind of share information um, as we go through everything. So what we're gonna do today is first talk a little bit about Guidehouse and then talk also about all the things you can do with ARPA and then give you some strategic takeaways to maybe help you think through this. Guidehouse is a national company, uh, 12,000 people across the country, um, split between public and private sector, but the private sector is highly regulated industries like healthcare or energy, um, and we do a ton of work in the state of Michigan. 
Um, we also work, uh, we don't just work with COVID, but pretty much everything under the sun that might exist in the public sector. And we do, as I said, work across the country. We work with 40 or more state, county, and local governments, um, as well as 45 healthcare systems with COVID response, with all the federal funding that's come out regarding that. So I wanna do a quick overview of like, what can you do with these ARPA funds? Um, so we have now gotten to the final rule, which just came out in January and then became fully official on April 1st. Um, and what we're really looking for in terms of a time frame is we need to obligate these funds by the end of 2024 and spend them by the end of 2026. Um, we like to say that this kind of uh, is different from the CARES Act funding. CARES Act was an immediate response. This is about planning for the future post COVID. And so that's, I think, a lot of the way that this is all laid out for everyone. Um, so we think about things in kind of five big buckets, and this is how it is really laid out in the final rule. The number one and most important thing that Treasury wants us to look at is the public health response. The second thing is looking at negative economic impacts. Um, we also have the opportunity for premium pay for essential workers that could be public sector or private sector. And then revenue loss, um, which uh, we'll get into in a second, but it essentially allows you to use the funds for almost anything. And then, of course, investments in infrastructure, um, which uh, layers really well with the bipartisan infrastructure law. So again, like I said, I'm gonna go through this quickly, but there's a lot of ideas here that you might look at and want to investigate or think about. But again, the public health response is specifically dealing with the pandemic and how it has affected people, both from a mental health standpoint and a physical health standpoint. Um, negative economic impacts, uh, that really allows us to think about um, populations that were specifically at risk economically, um, both during the pandemic and before the pandemic, and how we can invest, invest in those communities and peoples um, to make our post-pandemic world a little more equitable. Premium pay for essential workers. Uh, we do a lot of this uh, with uh, public sector, so you might um, wanna give hazard pay for people who are out dealing with people when the pandemic was raging. Um, you might think about your health department or your uh, police department, fire departments specifically um, that kind of kept things running. Um, this is also eligible for private sector workers, though I can say I have not seen a single government do that, um, mostly due to administrative overhead. Can talk about that later. Revenue loss. So uh, Treasury gave you a formula that said you can calculate how much money you lost due to um, COVID. I don't know what that number looks like. Some of the clients we've got, it's 100% of their allocation. Some of them, it is almost nothing. And actually we've got certain governments that grew over the pandemic. Um, so it's very different. Uh, there is a $10 minimum you, or $10 million minimum you can take if you did not. Um, and what this essentially allows is it essentially allows you to spend these funds on anything that is a provision of government services. So anything you can say you were going to spend money on, you can use this, these funds for. And finally, investments in infrastructure. This is your water and sewer um, and your broadband, which we're seeing a lot of um, investment in broadband, both in the state and on the local level. And then finally, just additional uh, uh, considerations I wanna make sure everyone's aware of. It can cover administrative costs, such as having a consultant come in and help you walk through it, or um, any additional costs you've taken by all of the uh, work it takes for your government to manage these funds. Um, as you know, it takes money to spend money sometimes, and you can use these funds for that. Restrictions on use. We can't deposit them into pension funds. You can't use this as a match for other federal funds, though I will caveat that later, and um, you can't use this as an offset in taxes that you cut during the pandemic. So um, I'm gonna skip this slide. This gets into the weeds. Okay, so in terms of what does Guidehouse do and how are we engaged with this, we do everything soup to nuts, um, everything from just eligibility review to project management, um, across the board. Um, I'm currently doing a lot of community engagement for your uh, tier of recipient. Um, you're required to do a community engagement, so I've been running a lot of the community engagement in different uh, counties across Michigan. So we kind of build those strategies and walk everyone through it um, and help you kind of allocate and spend these dollars. And we do have a blanket contract through the Michigan Association of Counties, which allows you to uh, engage with us without going through a large procurement process. 
Um, so, strategic recommendations. Um, the first thing I ask uh, clients to do is look around you. What is your neighbor doing? What are the smaller governments in your county doing? Maybe the cities, what are they investing in? How can you collaborate um, and grow the pot of money? Uh, we're also, you also want to look at your corporate and philanthropic partners. You know, are they going to maybe want to put up a couple million to a project to again increase the impact you can have with these funds? I think that's something you really want to look at and think about. Also with your nonprofit and community partners. Um, maybe they're already doing this work in your community and you've got an opportunity to fund those programs. And what we try to do is bring all this together for you um, to increase that overall impact. And then in terms of timeline, um, you know, we're in reporting month, which is always fun. So um, we're getting all that ready to go for the uh, U.S. Treasury portal. But my recommendation is that you spend this spring and fall if you have not yet spent your dollars um, and you do your research. You think about where do you want to spend these funds. There's a lot of additional money coming through and that just recently came through from the state. Um, ARPA dollars to the state government that the state is now rolling out. Um, you've got bipartisan infrastructure law dollars that are now starting to come out. You also have additional programs in ARPA itself, like the Capital Projects Fund that is going to come out here in a couple months from the state government. So there's a lot of opportunities and what I recommend is that you get your priorities in order and also if you need to do any research, you do that. And what does that look like? If you're going to do a broadband project, You've got to survey your population. You've got to know where your needs are. You've got to know where your gaps are. So when grant opportunities come up from the infrastructure law or from the state, you've already done that homework, so you're ready to jump on those opportunities and grow the amount of money you've got that you can bring to your people. So that kind of brings us to late fall. We think most of these dollars are going to be made available by late fall, especially in the state politically. I'm sure the governor's going to want to make those dollars available before the election. So if you've got a 75% plan, that's the recommendation. Sit on 25%. We don't know what the future holds. You want to be able to respond to any future who knows what, right? Um, and so you can assess and review that next summer. But this is kind of an outline of what I'm recommending a lot of counties take as they look at their funds going forward. And then in terms of our current local approach, like I said, we've got lots of funding opportunities. Uh, we've got federal and state ARPA funds, bipartisan infrastructure law, existing federal and state funding that's already there. Uh, we do think there will be some version of Build Back Better that gets passed. I'm sure it'll have a different name. Um, there will be other governments that you might want to work with, cities, the state, your um, you know, non-entitlement units all have money that they're sitting on and do not know what to do with. Um, and then, of course, your non-governmental partners. And then you take all that money, identify your internal needs. Are there opportunities to make critical government investments that you have not been able to make? Um, assess your external needs. Who in your community has really been impacted and needs this help? Assessing the capacity to execute. This is something we've seen a lot. You know, this is obviously a large county, so you do have probably a lot of internal infrastructure to deal with federal grants. But if you're working with a not-for-profit, are they ready to deal with federal grants? So thinking about those internal ca capabilities for internal risks. And then finally preparing, as I said, for other future funding. And hopefully that creates a comprehensive strategy that will get you to a better place when uh, you're ready to spend these funds. Um, I believe I've covered all of this. Um, uniform guidance is uh, what's required for all federal grants, and again, you're probably um, well prepared for that here in Macomb. And uh, the final thing is, um, you know, consider investing in areas that are going to generate future revenue or cut current costs. So can you make your government more efficient by investing today? Or can you invest in something that is going to make future revenues for your government, i.e., uh, maybe you've got a population growth in an area that doesn't have water infrastructure. Well, this is an opportunity to reach them and also create future revenues that way. And then just a big summary of our Michigan clients. This is kind of what this captures of where we're seeing the spend and what that looks like. Um, I'm not going to go through all the bullets here, but this might be an interesting thing to kind of take back and uh, sit with later. Um, and of course, finally, kind of future looking strategy, bipartisan infrastructure law, uh, broadband water. One of the really interesting things is 
The bipartisan infrastructure law is allowing you to use these funds as your federal match to federal grants for water and broadband projects. So you often are not allowed to use federal dollars for a federal match, but in this case you are. So you can use your ARPA funds to apply to these grants with your match. And then of course looking to a potential Build Back Better that would look at child care, housing and job training. Um, and finally, the bipartisan infrastructure law, which is what we're all looking at now. Um, you know, a lot of it is just reallocating to current programs. Um, so only 550 billion of it is new, um, but it does cover all of these things that, um, you know, even some of these things that were talked about today. And then finally, we are building, actually I think we have the tool now, um, that looks at the bipartisan infrastructure law and breaks down every single grant that's in there so that we can identify the funding opportunities for our clients. And this is kind of a breakdown of, of the formula funding, competitive funding, how many grants are available um, over this process. So I came in under the 15, I ran through this deck. Um, I'm sure you've got questions and that's what I'm here to do and answer them. Yes, thank you. Good job of running through the, the presentation. Uh, he gave a lot of information out. The reason I brought him here was because the county's received a lot of our funds. We've, that's going to be coming to us. And my concern, my question is that making sure that we spend it in the right spots. There's five parts of money there. And I and my Michelle administration, who had, I'm sharing this presentation with Steve Schmeagel, and I talked to him about this presentation coming forward about what are you thinking about when these art monies come? Because they're going to prepare a budget to bring to us on how to spend that money. We've got you know, projects identified for it, and they did their homework because they fall into this categories, but just thought it would be good to bring a briefing here of everyone, because I've seen this program twice, once at NACO, another time at MAC, and uh, I thought that you would receive some benefit by hearing this, and he went through it really quickly in consideration of our time, but there's a lot of good information in there that if you look in and dig down into that um, will probably spur some ideas and, and some more questions, and um, so they also want to thank them. They, they're one of the groups that uh, sponsored us at uh, the Tri-County Summit and, the, and they've worked, they do a lot of work with Wayne and Oakland County and, um, and so I thought we'd bring them here to give us some advice. Didn't charge us for this but they came out anyway to talk to us about this and uh, he's very knowledgeable and uh, he speaks quick which is what we like. <laughs> so thank you very much Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I know we have one person in the audience that just wants it all go to roads. Would that be correct, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Zinner. Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Um, great explanation, fast, too. It was really good. Um, in that map you had of the country, mm -hmm. Michigan had, I think, half of the, um, you said 40, I think we had 20 or uh -huh. so. Can you, what's the explanation for that, do you think? Um, uh, the explanation I would give to that is uh, COVID scared a lot of people and we saw it as an opportunity to work with our governments. Um, and so we really grew very quickly in the state of Michigan. Um, part of it is because we do have this blanket contract with the Michigan Association of Counties. So we work with a lot of uh, counties and I also would say that in Michigan we don't discriminate on the size as much as maybe we would elsewhere. So I work with a lot of small counties as well. Um, which has really been wonderful to kind of, uh, you know, my goal is to impact the community. I live here, I love the state, um, and so, you know, that's been a great opportunity for us personally, and that's kind of why we are so invested in Michigan. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Matuzak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Did I hear you say there is a community engagement requirement? Yes. And there are really easy ways to get around it, and I've seen a lot of counties get around it if they don't want to do it. Um, but I've seen other places really embrace the community engagement part of it and decide that it's important to them, and they, they really want to have that as part of their strategy. So, I'm very much in favor of community engagement, but I've been told by our county executive that he does not believe in community engagement. And so far, I haven't seen any come out of the executive's office. So I just wanted to clarify that there is, in fact, a community engagement requirement. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Seeing no, oh, Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair. I was wondering the same thing, too. So I appreciate you, Commissioner Matusik, bringing that up. What are some of the tactics that other counties are doing to go around that requirement? I mean, you have a meeting and you say that you ask the question, you know, does anyone have any thoughts and they'd like to spend the funds and you just did it. 
So it doesn't necessarily have to be like a public forum? I mean, this is a public forum, so it could be something like this. Um, Without the input of the administration, though? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. No other speakers. David, I really appreciate you coming in and doing this for us. We do have a motion to receive and file with support, so please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you very much, David. Now we're going to move on to department recommendations. The man we've all been waiting for. Uh, I'd like to have a motion for 7A agreement for the Board of County Commissioners of Oakland County, Yvonne Road, to Quinder Road reconstruction. Motion recommend to the full board. Matuzic moves. Moved by Wallace, supported by Matuzic. Mm -hmm. Brian, welcome. Good afternoon, Commissioner. And now you know you got, what, half a billion dollars just waiting there for you. <laughs> hey, we definitely did have some revenue loss during the COVID uh, time. So <laughs> that was uh, the way if I we have a placeholder for additional funds, we would definitely be glad to, to secure those. Um, as far as uh, 7A, it's an intergovernmental agreement between us and Oakland County. Oakland County has a project uh, on DeQuinder, 23 Mile Road, uh, Avon Road, uh, in conjunction with uh, GLWA, uh, installing a 96-inch water main and doing road improvement projects with roundabout and repairing the bridge uh, in front of Yates Cider Mill. So um, that funding is solely between GLWA, Oakland County, but as this intergovernmental agreement outlines, there are some parcels within the 23 mile and the Quinder uh, Macomb County side that there's some right of way acquisitions that are needed. So basically this intergovernmental agreement uh, ensures that we will do our due diligence and acquire that right away that's necessary for this project to move forward. So seeking approval of this intergovernmental agreement with Oakland County. Thank you very much, Chair Brown. That's a real bottleneck there. That's gonna be a real engineering feet correct to get that done um, yes uh, with the bridge and then the avon road being right there um plus installing a 96 inch water main which is a substantial size yes that'd be quite the, the project have you have any preliminary plans about traffic close to there in terms of i mean after it gets done how are they going to do they going to be four lanes i mean there's a <clears throat> lot of traffic that's a real major busy hub how how do they have capacity to widen because they do need some more lanes there. <laughs> uh, actually, they're installing two roundabouts, one at uh, 23 in, in DeQuinder and one at uh, Avon Road in, in DeQuinder. So that should be a roundabout there? Both, yeah, there'd be two roundabouts. Yes, correct. So it, it will make uh, the efficiency of travel through there um, better as far as the traffic flows and uh, safety um, of the motoring public through that section. So as compared to us, typical intersection. So. Good job. It's good life to be an engineer over there. It's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> thank you very much. I totally support it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Brian. Good afternoon. The, um, the right-of-ways, is there a cost for those? Uh, there is. The uh, Oakland County has outlined, um, and I was trying to get in touch with my right-of-way agent. I know they submitted some information to us. I know he had some questions for them as far as their analysis of what the estimated cost would be. Um, it, it's not astronomical, um, but it is something that uh, obviously we're not partaking in cost of the roadway project or um, right. bridge project, uh, but we are going to partake in, in the support of right-of-way acquisitions as needed for the roundabout. Yeah, because usually those numbers are included in this, in this write-up, and there wasn't any cost, and I assumed we weren't going to just take things from the property owners and not reimburse them. Correct. That would be a cost. Um, I'm just waiting to get information from our right-of-way agent on our side at Macomb County Department of Roads to verify what they had sent over as far as Oakland County's numbers. And so, so Oakland County's going to pay that to us? No. We are responsible for the cost. So there will be a cost associated with it. Once I get those accurate numbers, I can distribute that to uh, the board. Okay. And so you will have those before we approve this? Uh, I'm going to attempt to try and get that as far as an estimated cost, yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Commissioner Brown, did you have another question? No, I'm sorry. I went to delete it and it popped uh, up. Okay. Again. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Sounds good. Uh, we have a motion and support to recommend a full board. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. 
Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is 7B. It's a contract with MDOT re resurface Metro Parkway from Andrew Drive to Dodge Park. I'd like to have a motion to recommend full board. Support Zinner. Romano makes a motion and supported by Zinner. Brian, you're up. Actually, I believe in the paperwork that uh, my office had submitted uh, on this item, uh, we are actually seeking full board approval uh, today for that, being that this is a project that we're trying to get out as quickly as possible as far as under construction. Um, Let me just stop you there. So okay. you have to have it full support, uh, full approval? I believe that's the way Sue and through the process that um i'm, I'm it, gonna wait until i hear from that would Kyle be a, that the would be a uh, bypass item then right correct i don't i hadn't heard of that I, I didn't know about that okay point yeah. of order by yes. commissioner kleinfeld i mean not a bypass in the sense that one person approves it and then we receive receive and file later it's like when we just did like two days ago, it's an approval in committee as the full board. It's so it's different. Yeah, well, it would be approved end of the month though, 28th, not today. No, he's looking for approval today. today. Well, that's. Do we have the paperwork, Kyle? It does look like they requested full board approval um, at this meeting, and uh, I, it looks like I missed that. Okay. Would the motion maker and supporter like to rescind their motion and yes. restate it? I'm in motion. So, Romano, are you making, Commissioner Romano, are you making the motion to, for full board approval? Yes. Support? Who was the support? Well, he's going to give it to us right now. Support. Supported by Zinner. And the reasoning for this um, approval of full board today. We do have an Innovate Mountain project, which is a $250 million total project. And we will be working on the intersection of Mound and Metropolitan Parkway um, throughout the year, but more importantly, um, more so during the mid to latter part of the summer. So we have two projects currently on Metro Parkway, one that's gotten underway this week, which is Metropolitan Parkway between DeQuinder and Ryan, which is much needed. And then we have this project um, that is obviously going out to, to uh, construction. Actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. This project is the, the uh, section between uh, Andrew and Dodge Park. So this is the MDOT project that we have. We have a local project that I just said from DeQuinter to Ryan. We're trying to get these projects built early part of the summer so that we can get out of there before the major work on Mound, Innovate Mound is taking place at Metropolitan Parkway. So we don't want to have three major projects underway in the heart of the summer and the end of the summer um, to not have the motorists um, kind of be disgruntled with all that work in that area, even though it's much needed. Um, so we're trying to get this out as quickly as possible under construction early on so we can complete it and not affect as much the Innovate Mound project at Metropolitan Parkway. So that is the need to get this out as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair. And I, have, I can concur with you, Brian, that Metro Parkway, I try to avoid it at all costs because it is really bad. So I appreciate all the work that you guys are doing. That stretch is not, that's not a really long stretch, though. It doesn't even go to Van Dyke. Correct. It's uh, east of Van Dyke, uh, kind of east of the Is there a development reason why it saying. stops there? Yes, we, we had just had a project to do the intersection of Van Dyke and Metropolitan Parkway as far as an uh, asphalt uh, uh, project. We removed the existing pavement and put new asphalt in its place for the intersection east and west of the intersection of okay. Van Dyke and Metro. And this is a contract with MDOT? This is an so, MDOT contract that we facilitate through the Department of Roads, yes. So, so it is federal, federally funded. Okay, so, the, um, so MDOT contracts, finds the contractors for this part, or how does that work? We do the bid letting through MDOT process. Okay, and So we then are the fiduciaries to oversee the project, basically on behalf of MDOT. And you pick the, you pick the winner. It is the low bid system, so whoever the low, low qualified bidder is gets the project. Okay, the lowest one. And yes. so the $3 million, you, you would say, is pretty standard for that short, short of stretch? That is correct, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, You're Chair. Welcome. 
Thank you. See no other speakers, and this is going for full board approval. We have motion to support. All right, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you very much. And before I get to the next one, there just let you know there was an article in the Detroit News about the rising cost of road funding and give some details if people are interested. It was earlier this week. This time I'd like to ask for a motion to recommend full board 7C through F. So moved. Support. support. Moved by Haas, support by Romano. Brian, C through F. Thank you. Yes, these are all similar in nature. Uh, they are projects, uh, cost shares with projects at the various uh, intersections. And these are projects that were facilitated through CMAC funding, uh, congestion mitigation and air quality funding, uh, which pays for the majority of the project uh, for signal, traffic signal modernizations as indicated on all four of these projects. So uh, with the communities listed, these are cost shares. And as you can see, there are breakdowns. Um, whatever the CMAC money pays for, whatever the match money is for that, uh, we split that 50-50 with the communities uh, within that district. So um, seeking approval of uh, cost shares with the cities of Fraser and Roseville, city of Roseville, city of Roseville and St. Clair Shores, and city of St. Clair Shores for items C through uh, F. Thank you very much, Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair. Just a really general question, Brian, and maybe you might have mentioned this before, but because these are under $35,000, they still come to us because they are a cost share agreement? Is correct. that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and then regarding the CMAC money, um, how does that, how do they determine the amounts for that? We submit estimates, uh, so uh, CMAC funding is, is pro projected out. Um, I think we just went through and got some approvals for 24, 25, 2024, 20, and 2025 um, for CMAC funding. So we submit um, projects for approval and allocation of funds. Um, and we have been pretty successful um, in getting CMAC funds within the county. Um, okay. And that is done through our traffic department. Um, and it has been a success as far as traffic signal modernizations. Um, there's the, the, the black uh, backplating of this uh, signals and if you see there's a original signal that doesn't have a black back plate so it highlights the signal and the light better as you come approaching it um, we take some of our diagonal spans uh, which make them box spans so it's easier to see the signal um, I guess geometrically it's easier to see a box span signal versus a diagonal signal span uh, as the signals are hung through the intersection um, I'd be more than happy to explain it more in, in depth if you're want to um, but uh, the engineering behind it it's it's signal improvements improve improvements that make it a safer intersection to travel through okay. so or we could take a field trip right you could take a right field thanks trip, for yes. the explanation thank you chair thank you commissioner thank you very much we do have a motion of support to recommend a full board c through f please vote oh never mind commissioner zinner no, oh okay please vote <coughs> Motion passes 12 to 0. Do you Thank have you, Commissioner. Comment, Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Brian, um, I sent you an email about uh, the work you did. You, um, you did on the um, Harper Bridge um, in Clinton Township. Um, thanking you, and I just want to publicly thank you for that, for our citizens. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm sure the other commissioners that were concerned about it, too, feel the same way. Thank you. I believe that got open today or should be open today. So, thank you for coming in, Brian. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Easy, today. <laughs> easy again. <laughs> Have a nice Easter, Brian. Thank you. Same you. Take Next care. item on the agenda is resolutions number eight. Uh, we have a 2022-8265 in opposition to the imposition of Highland Parks water and sewer debt on Macomb County residents and businesses. I'd like to have a motion to recommend to full board. So moved, Paul. Yeah. Moved by Hall, support by Wallace. Second. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Um, thank you. The <clears throat> the only issue that I have with the resolution is the second to last, um, be it further resolved that Macomb County Board of Commissioners hereby calls on the state of Michigan to create a system in which debts 
of non-paying water and sewer customers can no longer be charged to paying customers. I understand that with respect to Highland Park, um, but they do have a program in which all of our communities, there are members of the community that, that will apply uh, based on their income. And so there is a program through Great Lakes Water Authority that we have residents that have benefited from. And I think that that's a different issue than this issue. And I, I know we discussed it um, not that long ago, well, who knows if it was long ago or not now, uh, about, about Great Lakes having that program and because I remember commissioners asking, are Macomb County residents benefiting from it? And there were Macomb County residents benefiting from it. It wasn't being, it wasn't a majority in one, in one city. So I just wanted to point that out. If, if the board would be open to removing that, the, the second to last be it further resolved, we might be able to get a unanimous vote. We'll take it under consideration. And the next speaker is Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I, I've been talking about this issue for quite some time. I'd ask Chair Brown to um, invite uh, Brian Baker to present to us. I, I know the um, GLWA, he, he is our representative, and I wanted to get an update on this since the system has been operational for a number of years, and I know that they had not been back to the board to give us a, an update on it. Um, so, you know, first of all, thanking Brian for his service um, as being on this board, but obviously we're at a disadvantage um, when this board was created years ago. I know, um, and I commend Brian, you all got a copy of the GLWA letter um, that was signed by uh, members of that board as well as um, some of our leaders um, addressed to the state and to the governor in regards to to this issue and um, that's really under the direction of Brian. So um, Brian uh, felt that that was necessary and um, uh, you know being a paying water customer as we all are I, in my community I just could never understand every single year why my water bill just constantly kept going up double digits and a lot of my constituents would be calling me and asking me the same question in the system and the calculations it's very very complicated um, I could never understand it myself um, and, and Brian kind of detailed where where these problems were and, and basically it was it was non-payment um, from Highland Park over all these years and um, you all are aware there was a press conference um, and at that press conference a, a packet was distributed to everybody as well kind of documenting what that unpaid amount was which was the 13.5 million over the course of the last 10 years. Um, Macomb Township, my community, $1.4 million of that uh, unpaid uh, number has been directed specifically to them. So that in turn kind of answered my question as to where those double digit increases were in our community. And obviously um, the communities that you represent are, you know, are all listed here. Um, they may not all because they may have their own um, direction under their own you know, water, um, for example, Mount Clemens is not listed here because they have their own. Um, but long story short, I, I wanted to draft a resolution specifically to the issue relative to what's going on. Uh, my community passed a resolution. Um, hopefully this will be um, a template for your, your communities as well to pass a resolution. We're all in this together. Um, and, and long story short, you know, it, it's just not right what's happened here with Highland Park and that our rate payers have now have to pay for this $13.5 million over the course of the last 10 years. And if it doesn't get resolved, it's gonna to continue to grow. So I believe this, you know, the state put us in this situation. Um, the state's gonna to have to get us out of this situation. And that was my intent here for the resolution, um, you know, in regards to Commissioner Kleinfeld, in regards to, you know, the, um, the change in regards to the non-paying water. That specifically is, it's, specifically related to the debts of Highland Park. It's, it's not related to any other debts of non-paying. It's, it's specific to the debt that we're talking about here that's, that you've all been made aware of. So I'll take it under consideration, um, but I'd like to move it forward as is right now so that I can do a little bit more research and maybe have a conversation with Commissioner Kleinfeld offline. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Matuzak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, at the Clinton Township Board meeting, we discussed this at length and passed it this week. Um, I actually would have liked to see a, uh, a resolved that uh, not just encourages the state to fix this, because this is clearly their problem, but to encourage the other communities in the county to pass a similar resolution. I think this only moves, uh, moves the state to act if it's a sort of unified front among all the communities. So I, I mentioned that we were discussing this as a way to sort of encourage the other communities to pass a similar resolution. So I'm, I'm very much in favor of that. Uh, I share Commissioner Kleinfeld's issue on this third, on the next to the last resolved, um, because the way this reads now, uh, if I were a, uh, a city manager somewhere, um, I would sort of be encouraging people not to pay um, because the state's going to step in and pay. What, that's what this says. Now, if we simply changed uh, non paying water and sewer customers of the Great Lakes Water Authority, that may in fact get at what we're trying to get at here, which is that we don't want to pay for other members. Uh, other communities who fail to have their their people pay their water bills. So uh, I will certainly vote for this today. I think this is really important that we send a very clear message that Lansing needs to clean up the mess they created with Highland Park. Um, but I would like to see if we can play with that last uh, resolve just to make it clear about our intent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Chairman Brown. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Sabatini, for bringing this forward. And it's a it's a template it's to get the conversation started, so we can have un unanimity around the whole region. And uh, I support that. And uh, um, I think that his reasoning for leaving that language in is is, is good. It, it's everyone's going to have a different perspective on how the best way to approach this is. But this is a general language going forward to uh, get the conversation started. I will tell you that I have a kind of initiated conversations with Wayne County because we as a board of commissioners can initiate the change to the bylaws of the Great Lakes Water Authority that prevent this from happening in the future. We can put in language that says perhaps that the, 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 the delinquencies stay within the county in which they occur. So if they occur in Macomb County, it's Macomb County it comes out of Macomb County's till to take care of it rather than being a burden on other parts of the county. That's in a simplistic approach. Um, we'll see what they have on their mind and see what they're willing to do, but Wayne County agrees with us and we could agree on language to amend the bylaws of the Great Lakes Water Authority, which is our authority, which we have the authority to do. Um, I suggest we probably will do that. And I'll bring it forward for us to consider and see if we want to do that. But we can stop the problem going forward. Repairs for the past. The great father in Lansing is the one that's probably got a lot of money right now. They'll probably be asked to bail them out, which is not the best way to do things. But, and, and, and Commissioner Kleinfeld's right. We know well that was born of contention when this whole thing was set up about, I think it was a $10 million fund set up to pay for claims for people who didn't, wouldn't pay their water bills because there was an assumption made that people are, there are going to be people that just won't be able to for whatever reason. Seems to me if you, that the state say they're going to pay it, there's really going to be no one's going to let them do it. But that's a different problem, and that's something that's maybe out of our control to do deal with necessarily. But um, fixing it going forward is something we have the ability to do by changing the bylaws, and uh, we'll see where that discussion goes. And I'll bring it back to this committee with the chairman's permission uh, when we have something to, to look at. So, thank you, Commissioner Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I believe some of the confusion relates to, if I'm understanding the whole problem right, um, GLA's, GLWA's customers are the municipalities, and the municipalities' customers are the residents and businesses. Uh, we should not do anything as Commissioner, I believe Commissioner Kleinfeld was referring to the end users in bailing out. You're welcome to respond. 
Commissioner Matuzak is correct. If we just added GLWA after customers, it would solve the issue for all of us. Yeah, exactly. And I would like to do it in committee because we don't, we can't change it in between without a, uh, uh, the board would have to amend it full board. If we could, if we could, if the motion makers would agree to add GLWA, that's all you have to add. I think it would satisfy everybody. Thank you. That's where I was going because we should make it clear that it's the GLWA customers that we're talking about and not the end customers with the two tier. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I'm still on the first round. And we'll come to some conclusion at the end of these conversations and how we're going to go forward. Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair. I do support Commissioner Matuzic's suggestion about adding the uh, and I quote of the GLWA authority after uh, customers. Um, in addition, usually our resolutions, we do have the last paragraph saying, you know, an electronic copy will be sent to, you know, whichever party. And so I would like to, you know, suggest an amendment to add an additional paragraph that this copy, a copy of this resolution be sent to all of the communities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would vote for that if the um, board wanted to, but um, I would question um, the, that name just changed recently to that in recent times. Um, I would, when Commissioner Matusik was talking, she said uh, in a sentence, in the sentence, anyone who, any group of people who wants to who didn't who doesn't pay for their water? Um, that to me is it covers it for me. Any group of people who don't pay for their water, and that covers everything to me. Um, then GLWA doesn't if their name changes again or they whatever, which isn't going to happen immediately probably, but in the future. But whichever way um, the vote goes will be fine for me. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman Brown, the qu I have a question on your comments about changing the bylaws. That's nothing we can do exclusive, is it? Is, don't we need to have the GLWA board? Yeah, they yeah. Would okay. have, to have the same language change, and then we would have to adopt it, and other communities would have to adopt it. In Oakland County, would, they have an opportunity to do the same. So it would be set the same language. And okay. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Commissioner Kleinfeld? Um, yeah, GLWA has been GLWA since, since the bankruptcy. There hasn't been a change. Um, but what we're asking is for GLWA customers. We don't want to be on the hook for them. The people that get the water in their homes are not GLWA customers. So by leaving the paragraph the way it is, we're, we're not focused on what GLWA is doing, which is charging us for somebody else. And that is, that is a statement that we want to make. So, um, um, and I would like to know what the chair thinks about um, what Commissioner Song said, because we could wrap it all up in an amendment very quickly here. Um, if you guys are open to that, thank you. Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, chair. Um, I think Commissioner Matuzak's suggestion is, is a good one. I think it, it makes it very clear. I'm not opposed to that whatsoever and, and adding that. Uh, that um, In regards to uh, Commissioner Song's suggestion as far as encouraging other communities, that's really the intent of this as well, so we can certainly add that, and I have no objections to either of those. Seeing no other speakers, I would like to have an amendment to make the two changes, but we need the exact wording of what those changes are. Chair, as the mover, I will make the amendment to add GLWA in any last paragraph that a copy be sent to all recipients in Macomb County. Do we have sub support by Romano? Any conversation on that? No. So this is a vote on the amendment. Please vote. <coughs> Chair, just a procedural question yes. that our friend over here just raised. The governor automatically will get this. Is that correct? 
I believe so. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion passes 12 to 0. And that was also the motion f as amended, right? I want to make sure I got that right. All right. Thank you very much. At this point, uh, I need a motion to receive and file correspondence from the Office of Public Works, the uh, drainage report. Do we need to send the last one to full board? That was motion. That was a motion that I wanted to clarify. Yeah. Yes, I, I was too, because where I came from, you always had vote amendment first, different sets of rules. But this was changed as the motion. Ninety, I'll make the motion to receive and file. Romano makes the motion to receive and file the correspondence, supported by? Zinner. Zinner, supported by Zinner. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you very much. Item number 10 is public participation. No public, no participation. On to number 11, Commissioner's comments. Commissioner Matuzak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At 7 o'clock this morning when I went through this agenda, reading all the attachments, it was seriously missing a lot of pieces that were of substantial um, subject matter that I would have liked to have read before we got here to see the PowerPoint. So I understand that some of these come from outside groups and we don't get them until too late, but I really would like staff to get the attachments attached at least before the day of the meeting. I look at these things at seven in the morning. That's when I have time to do it. So I really, um, we need to do better. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So noted, Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Chair. Just want to wish everybody a blessed and happy Easter. So. Thank you. Chairman Brown. Yes, thank you. Again, in their defense, they did come in late, and there was 35 slides. It was a big presentation, and so, like everything, like our department heads, we want to make sure things are in a timely manner, and uh, uh, that's what they did. So. We'll make sure that, that we're mindful of those things, absolutely, because we're trying to express other departments. We need to protect practice it ourselves as well. So I hear you. Thank you. Commissioner. <laughs> nope, now you're behind Commissioner Van Sickle. <laughs> Along that line, possibly to put the um, onus on the departments who want the motions through, maybe we should have the attachments before we add them. To the agenda. Because then if they don't get it to us, it's on them. So noted. I'd agree. Commissioner Wallace. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to let you all know if you have little ones around, we will be having a extravaganza downtown Mount Clemens uh, Saturday the 16th from 12 to 3. Um, Easter egg hunt and uh, raffles of Easter baskets and bicycles. Everything is free. Kids come, they'll get a raffle ticket, and then we'll draw tickets uh, later on that day. So that's it. If you want any other information about it, I can send you the flyer. But if you have little ones, bring them on out. That's it. Um, it's going to be a Macomb Place right downtown. That's like the biggest area that we have um, the eggs will be out there uh, plastic eggs they're stuffed with candy and then um, so right at the end we'll do the raffle we do have a few bikes and a lot of Easter baskets to raffle off fantastic and the next item on the agenda motion to adjourn <laughs> motion made by Romano supported by Zinner, Zinner. please vote Brings you a lot of eggs. Yeah. Peace and prosperity. Motion passes 12 to 0.